Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the color ramps associated with setting up your material for your fires. And But before we do, we're going to take a look at color ramps in general on just a regular object. So let's take a look at Blender real quick. Because they're different. So back in here, I have just a regular cube in the scene. And I have a light positioned right above it. So let me zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it. All right. So notice, and here's the ramp that I have set. So I'd gone into here and I'd set the ramp and so if you're not familiar with ramps basically I have it starts with two colors I added a third color by clicking the add button here in fact I can add another color there and it, there's a little dotted line like that and if I left click that dotted line I'll have access to it and then I can click here and maybe I'll grab another color like this blue and the alpha values are pretty low I'll crank it up the reason why is because this starts with this color having a zero alpha value and this one's cranked up. But the way these colors work, they're based on the normal, or basically the vector normal that points out from the face of the surface of the object. Right? So the position of the light affects the color. So in this case, here's my red. You can see right in here. See, there's my ramp that shows up across that range. And so what me meaning that if I go way down, if I put this light way down here like this, these colors are red because if you look at the ramp, it's directly pointing straight up here like this. But this color out here, you know, these blues out to black, this position relative to this light is way off at this angle. All right, so if I move the I move the cube you can see it's moving it here so the ramps are different than you might think as far as the way they work but it allows you to have some really cool effects I can do all kinds of effects that you might do typically in cycles these days with the particles but you have to plan in advance the positioning of your light and the way the faces of the object are pointing towards the light so that's the typical way that this works with that light. But now let's go look at the way for the smoke and fire because that's the purpose of this. All right, so I'm going to look at the water. No, that's my fire. Yeah, that's my fire right in here. So I'll go get the material for that. So I have two materials. I have this grayscale material, which I talked about before, and then I have this color material in here. So here's the same ramp that I'm setting up as well. However, the, it works differently in here. The ramp colors, you set the ramp colors the same way. So in all these, I crank these up. I clicked it. I cranked up the alpha values on all these. Cranked up the alpha values on all these. But what this is, it's running, and this, let me take a look at this down here. You look here, no alpha value. So what these colors are doing, they're working over time. All right, so that's the distinction. So when, you, when I run the simulation, and in this case, I'm running it over 96 frames, the first colors are going to start down here at these low colors of white, go up to yellow as it progresses, then to the orange, and then, then the reason it turns into smoke, and the reason people use black backgrounds is because this alpha value down here is set to zero, which means it's completely transparent. All right, so it's basically, as time evolves, it's going to a completely transparent value. So we can see that if I just render individual frames, if I start down here low, and I render this frame down here, it's looking at just these low end values right here. In fact, if you can go lower, you'll see the first couple of colors are right down in that very low range. Now, if I come up halfway through the frames, about 50 or something like that, let's see what it does. All right, there's, there's that. So it's starting the frames at the bottom where it init where the par particles initiate there are all those whites and then it's coming up towards those yellows in here and then it's coming up towards these in here and then these are still not high enough to fade out but as you get higher into the fr into the sequence then that's why these start fading to alpha values and then they disappear and that's what gives it the illusion of the smoke like that well i can verify that if i just come up here and i just change this Let's go grab this guy here, and I'll just crank up the alpha values just for a second on that, and let's re-render re it. See, it's not fading away. Let's—I'll even crank them up more. 
we render it. Alright, so it's not anywhere near as see-through as if I had done it down like this. See, it's fading away much more so in there, and especially if I was all the way up at the top frames, you would really see it. So there's uh, the, this really becomes a critical factor when you're actually designing your scene and your fire, and that's a lot of experimentation. I mean, a great deal of experimentation, especially with all the colors and the lights and other objects you might have in the scene. So uh, maybe that kind of gives you an idea, but in the interim, let me give you a, a view of some of the other animations that we're working, that I was working with. Here's a... Uh, Here's 1,500 particles. Let's see. If fire resolution was 105, water resolution was 95. That's a reasonable amount to start working with. You can kind of get the effect. But you can see the problem with that is when it intersects the water. Back here, when the fire intersects the water, you get some really bright effects. And you can see the line of the domain in there. So you have to really work with that. So let's try another one. Let's see. There was, what's this one? That was pretty high resolution, 125 for the fire, 125 for the smoke, almost too much. And it, and then that white really pops out. All right, let's see. And what was this? Oh, yeah, this was the low resolution. Nope, that's not it. I guess that went away, this one. And this is 1,500 particles, 89 on the fire, and 82 on the water. But now you see my view is almost horizontal to it. You don't see that bright edge near as much. But you can see it kind of mix and match. I'm kind of planning some scenes for the future. So I kind of experiment all this stuff in advance. And then I know what I want to do instead of having to fight it later on. All right, well, that's it for now. And I'll see you in the next lesson.